Hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me once again. My name's Mrs. B and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia, where I am an art teacher and I've been putting all my lessons that I do in the classroom into videos for you guys to do at home or around the world. Now today we're going to take a trip out of space and have a go at using some paper cutting skills, some drawing skills and painting skills as well, all in the one task. So come along with me and we'll have a go at creating something that looks like this. So you may know that I am about to have a baby, so I might not be able to make some videos in the next few weeks for you, but pop back in a few weeks time and I'll be able to introduce you to my new little bundle of joy. Uh, and I, But for now, I'm going to put my feet up a little bit and have a little bit of a rest uh, before she comes into the world. But thank you for all of your well wishes. Uh, it's very nice to hear from you. And while you're here, please make sure that you like, comment and subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel so I can continue to make really cool art lessons for you just like this. For this out of this world task today, you're gonna need some drawing and collage materials. So that means you'll need a piece of white paper. That's to stick everything down onto. Plus whatever colored paper you can find. That might be rummaging through your recycle bin. It might be some wrapping paper or even magazines or some newspaper. I'm also going to use some alfoil to add some shimmery bits to our object. If you have that, that's a cool option. You'll need some glue and scissors to help you with your cutting and pasting. With the drawing part of the task, you will need something to draw with. If you just have a pencil, that's fine. Today, I'm using a permanent pen and some textures because I wanna turn my textures into watercolor paints later, but that's just an optional extra. If you just have a gray lead pencil and some crayons, you can still make your task look awesome too. So let's set up our collage and drawing station and we'll get started. The first thing we're gonna to do today is start with our rocket that we're gonna create out of paper and using some simple shapes to cut and paste. So choose whatever color you'd like your rocket to be. All right, and making the shape, it's actually really quite easy. You could either do a triangular shape. So that just means really you could just draw a straight line in the corner of your piece of paper to create a bit of a triangular rocket. That's completely fine. And especially if you're a younger student, you might choose to simplify it just by cutting a straight line. If you wanna challenge yourself, you could have a go at creating something a little different. I'm gonna use this straight line as the bottom of my rocket. I'm gonna do a dot up here and I'm just gonna make a bit of a curved line coming down to this straight line here. And I'm gonna to try to do the same thing on the other side. You can see it's kind of got that arched shape there. So whatever one you prefer, you can cut that out as neatly as you can. There, and that's going to become the body of our rocket. Now, our rocket also needs some finer details as well. Firstly, I'm gonna put some little wings coming off the side here. And I'm just going to use my corners again to cut some triangular shapes. And I'm going to stick them on the side of my rocket to look a little bit like that. Now the next step is up to you and what materials you have at home. If you have some more colored pieces of paper, you can continue to layer your paper and create details through collage by cutting and pasting, or you might not have extra colors of paper and that's completely fine. And you could choose to add some details through drawing. I'll show you an option using both. You might choose to do one or the other or both. I'm gonna use my blue piece of paper to create a bit of a window here. I'm gonna do a circle and there's a couple of strategies. You can either draw it first, you could trace around something circular, or you could just cut it freehand and see how you go. Either way, cutting circles is tricky. So just take your time. 
And remember, we don't want to see the ugly side that I've drawn on. I'm going to turn that guy over like that. Now the elf oil isn't necessary, but it is really cool and it kind of makes my rocket look like it's made out of metal. So I'm using my elf oil here. Elf oil is tricky to cut because it's fairly brittle. Oh, there we go. But you can add some layers like that. So feel free just to add whatever you like to your exciting rocket ship. So as you can see, I've arranged my paper to stick on the top corner of my larger piece of white paper here. You can do this side or this side, it's completely up to you, but just stick it down on one of the corners. If you would like more space down here as well, you could even make your rocket sort of sit off the edge. That could look a little bit awesome as well. So it's completely up to you. Now remember, when working with collage, it's very important to layer your paper, just like a brick layer, builds a house one brick at a time, making it higher and higher. Collage is kind of like that. So you need to start with whatever is furthest away, which means I'm not gonna stick down my piece of elf oil first, am I? No, I need to stick down the rocket body first and then work my way up. Remember, we don't wanna see my ugly drawing lines. Next, I'm going to do the wings. Now, part of, part of collage is making sure that you stick everything down nice and flat and neatly as well. So using enough glue is quite important. And quite often I'll send my students back sometimes if they haven't put enough glue, especially in the corners, to make everything stick down like this, nice and neatly, so it doesn't fall apart within the next couple of minutes anyway. There we go, looking good so far. It's looking good, but a little bit plain. So I'm going to add my other details now. So I've just cut some little yellow strips. This is the type of thing that you could choose to do with paper or with drawing, adding some lines like this. Whatever you do, just do it with care. So that's my collaged rocket there. As promised, I'm gonna add a few lines or details with drawing as well, which you might choose to do too. So that's the idea of the rocket. You can keep going for as long as you want to add detail, but I'm gonna move on to the drawing part of the task now, which has to do with this section. So have a think, when a rocket shoots up into the air, what happens below him? What comes out here? Fire. Well done, Sadie, fire. <laughs> that's right, the fire comes down and pushes the rocket up into space. Now, instead of doing fire today, we're actually going to explore lots of different types of lines coming out of the bottom of the rocket. We're gonna maybe try to come up with 10, maybe even 12 different types of lines coming out. Now, this part is up to you. I'm gonna have a go at drawing some lines, but I definitely don't want you to copy mine. Different designs of lines, it's infinite. What that means is there's so many to choose from. So if you're just copying the 10 or 12 I come up with, you're not really using your creativity or your creative mind. I'm gonna start with a bit of a crazy jazzy line coming out the side here. Small swirls and big swirls, bit of a pattern like this. and I'm gonna take the line from the rocket all the way to the edge of my paper. So that's line number one. 
but there's so many more we're going to do. You're just gonna keep exploring different types of line. Maybe you can look around you and see if there's any types of lines within your home or classroom that inspire you. You could do some really small, little tiny detailed ones like this. Whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability, nice and neatly. There we go. Some tiny zigzags there. You could go from this side now. Your lines don't really have to join. If you'd like to do something more like this, you can just do some lines that are repetitive, but they don't necessarily have to join up. That looks cool. So take some time to add some interesting lines to your work to make yours look different to mine. Now you might notice guys that I'm doing my lines a little bit smaller at the top and then making them wider as I get toward the bottom of my paper, just because there's more room down here. So you might choose to do that as well so that the bottom of your paper isn't too plain. Now I'm looking at some vines that are on my fence just outside the window that I'm working at. So that's inspired me with this line. So your lines don't even have to make sense. We're just exploring line now. So anything that you can see that inspires you, maybe you can see a pattern on something you're wearing and you can try to replicate that line in your artwork. There, I think I'm done. Another detail you could do if you wanted to with your pen is add some stars or um, draw another rocket in this extra space here, um, some planets, some other things that you might see, even an alien um, in outer space, just to sort of fill this space, obviously as neatly as you can. Just like that. Now we're gonna to add to our drawing a little bit by adding some color. So if you have crayons or pencils or whatever, what I'd ask you to do with that is just go over, choose a color, designate a color for each line, and then just go over it a little bit with the color. As you can see here, I'm using the crayon just to make each line stand out and you would change the colors. Now today I'm going to use testers just because afterwards I'm going to then use some water to then turn these water soluble textures into watercolor paints. Now, this is an optional extra. Please do not do this part if you've used a texture here that is not permanent like mine. What will happen if you just used a water soluble texture for all these lines is that when you add the water, these beautiful lines are gonna disappear as well. So you don't want that. If that is you, that is fine. You'll skip the step with adding water and you can just add color with something else, with crayons or textures and not add the water. But I love the effect of adding water. So I'm just gonna go over my lines, a new color for each one. Just helps to make each one stand out. And I'm gonna ask my Beautiful assistant, Sadie, to grab me a brush and some water, please, sweetheart. That's really good. Mm, thank you. I like those dotted quail lines. Swirl lines. Yeah. Swirl These lines. ones? Yeah. I like that one too. Thank you. Ooh. That one's sad. Just like drawing a square, but instead of drawing it up, you go down again. Yeah, that, that looks fun. Do you like it so far? Absolutely perfect. Well done. We're done. Mummy, look. Thank you. Like it? 
looks awesome and thank you to sadie who has had a go at finishing it off for me so now adding water if you haven't done this before it's really quite fun you'll see here just adding a little bit of water it keeps the really bright line that you've drawn so make sure you draw really neatly with your texture still because it keeps that line but then it sort of spreads it around it kind of just makes it look like it's spreading out up into the space makes it look just a little bit magical so we're practicing our lines a lot today first we drew them in black then we drew them in colorful texture and then now we're going over them again in water so lots and lots of practice today with our lines the colors might even mix a little bit here and you can see as time goes on the color is spreading more and more it looks awesome don't add too much water or you'll just find it will end up a bit of a mess just a little bit that's it that one looks fine but again this part is optional it's just a fun little extra if you have the materials available to you so awesome that was really fun and I hope you guys have enjoyed this task. You've done lots of things today. You've done cutting and pasting. You've added lines with drawing. You've added lines with texture. You added water to make it paint and had a go at creating a definitely out of this world colorful artwork. So it's as simple as that. I hope you enjoyed the task today, that you had the materials available to create something cool like this. I love the effect when textures turn into watercolours. So please make sure that you comment below if you loved it as well. And you could even send me a photo via Instagram at artlife.melb so I can see what you're doing at home as well. This is me signing off for a little while. Thank you so much for joining me. And please make sure you check out all the other videos available within the Art Life YouTube channel. See you later.